I'm E and I uh, currently work as a software engineer at Google, uh, working on Apache Beam, mainly the I.O. connectors. So today I will have two talk and uh, one demo. And the first one is uh, and then making the jump from batch to streaming. Uh, it outlines why we want to write a streaming pipeline instead of a batch pipeline. So this is a generic. It won't attach being specific implementations and uh, like a code uh, patterns, but uh, just interact with this concept. If you are already familiar with this concept and uh, watching the playback, and you want to just uh, see how to use them in being, then can jump to my second uh, uh, section, which we uh, talk about the implementation details and uh, how to write the actual code. So let's start. First of all, why streaming? There are two, basically two types of data processing. One is called a batch, and another is called a streaming. And the batch is when you have some data that can be accumulated time to time. And then you have a, either process it one time, initiate a data processing job or pipeline, or you initiate it uh, regularly, say in a cron job in on schedule. And um, from time to time, your data can have get more and more data and your time, your batch job can run and more and more frequently. So then it makes sense, totally makes sense to make this diminish this frequency. That is have a single streaming job to processing the data instead of uh, having a scheduler and a Chrome batch job running regularly. Also, this has another benefit that the batch job running regularly can cause usage hike. We see our customer resource usage if they have a big batch job and they run like daily and at that time, it causes a lot of resource strength and the coin like a resource exhausted issues. But if we run the it is streamingly and we can dynamically uh, divide, uh, distribute the workload. So it, in this case, it makes sense to run a streaming pipeline. It can even save your cost because you do not need a very large resource to be prepared. And another, you already have a streaming source and you always you now want to get the result at the real time. That is, you want to have a streaming pipeline at the first place. So what is a streaming different from batch? First, uh, batch, the most uh, obvious difference is batch is operate on the bounded data source. Bounded means you know exactly how much data you have to process at the start of the, your pipeline. And then parallelizing that pipeline is easier. You can have a static split of your bounded source. And you know exactly how many type data you already processed and how many remain to process. And then Bing can distribute the data into different workers have a load balance. On the other hand, a streaming data line ingests the data from unbounded source. Unbounded means we do not know how much data we will process. And in theory, it's infinite number of data if we run the pipeline infinite long. The data just come from some real-time source. And uh, also the data can ar arrive out of order. Uh, this will uh, go goes to another important concept in being that is event time and the processing time. In being, we differentiate these two time stamp. The event time can come out, out of order, but uh, with data processing, we want to process like a group of the data around the some event time together and do some averages. So we need to maintain the event time of the data even if it's arrived out of order. So this will give some challenge and uh, we'll show how being resolve these challenges. So this is a demonstration for the data. The, the color is key. So it's all matter of the key, the data, and uh, 
we know that being at the very early days, there was a map reduce, which essentially is group a large amount of data by key. So the data processing tools, uh, central concept are the key the data and the data is processed or grouped according to the keys. So we have for the bounded pipelines, we have a data of virus key and the primitive or a basic operation is group them together by key. And we will show this, we have a finite number of data and doing a group key process, we then have a, this data group by each key and uh, materialized. For unbounded data, the data arrives time to time, and uh, we also want to group them by key. Then we have a fundamental question is, how do we materialize this data, this live data coming from some unbounded source and the group by them in uh, some organized manner? So again, uh, just a reminder, the batch pipeline have steady data throughput because we already have a source. We can pull the data from the source. It's always there. It's consistent and uh, we can use a large bundle size and uh, going through do funds. Do fun is a primitive of being you just write some function that operate on the data you take an input and output. So, for, but for the streaming pipeline, it can have variable data throughput. It can have periods of high and low data entering the pipeline. And this can lead to varying computational needs over the life of the pipeline. And then the pipeline needs some load balancing or auto scaling. And the bundles can be very small if the data is sparse. So uh, how to process the streaming data in time. That it comes to a, a fundamental or important concept in being that is clearly treat the event time and the processing time differently. And uh, actually the data is labeled by event timestamp called a timestamp the value. So remember the event time is when the data being processed and uh, was created is uh, somehow uh, like a metadata associated with each element when it is created. And the processing time is the machine time that the data is currently on this stage in the pipeline. Ideally, we want to, this time to be the same or at least uh, as close as possible. It means we have a minimum latency in the system. But uh, in reality, there is always some delta. The process time is later than the event time. So this is a demonstration of a life cycle of an element. The event time um, and the processing time. The processing time step is always uh, greater than the event time stamp. So there is a school. And uh, being handles this out of order data, but still give organize result, materialize the result based on the event time and the divide it by maintaining the windows. So the windowing is a fundamental concept in streaming. It's the processing of slicing up a data source based on time. This is generally based on the event time. And there are multiple approaches that can be taken for windowing. And we will go through the three um, fun basic uh, windowing mechanism in Bing. The first is global windowing and uh, the interval windowing and uh, including the fixed window, sliding window, and the finalization windows. And uh, the window maintains a period of event time that uh, the data within the window put in here. And when we materialize or close this window, we don't know because the data arrive out of time. Some data can arrive very late, even though it has a very early event time. So we need to know how to close a window and materialize the element within this window. We need to have to know, have an approximate. How do we know the data we in this window are arrived? We maintain uh, watermarks. 
So mechanically, the system think that it will, when it will no longer get any data from the before the watermark time, we then can close or materialize this window. So the watermark tracks the approximately the earliest data that is have have not yet arrived. So ideally, the data just arrived in time and it maintains a watermark that is minimally good from the current event time, current processing time. This is a perfect watermark, but we actually do not know. So this is a demonstration and the x-axis is the event time and the y-axis of process time. And ideally, we our watermark will be just before the earliest event time element that have yet been arrived, which is demonstrated as such. So we have first element arrived at this processing time, and the event time is in this early, and the watermark is right before the event time. And then we have a second element, the event time is later, and our watermark somehow goes like this. Have a later data that is not yet arrived, our event time goes to here and uh, we have not seen this data. So the watermark does not advance. And uh, essentially we see this data, the watermark advance. This is called so the so-called perfect watermark, which is not uh, practical. So in practice, when you see the this data, you actually do not know if there is a late data that has earlier event time in your late processing, but your watermark can only be approximated in a real system. We do not know how the later the data, when we are, when the later data will come. And uh, this is called the heuristic watermarks, which is all the system is using. Essentially, the watermark will advance when the system thinks there is no data earlier than the watermark will come. And uh, we will see in this system, the watermark advanced uh, from time to time. And uh, then there is a data that is incoming, but it's before the watermark. The window associated with this event time is already materialized. And this is a uh, late data. So this is a heuristic watermarks. It's the only way to practically approximate when the window can close. And uh, in the other hand, it has the late data. So the late data, what happens when we do get a late data, in other words, data from before the currently watermark? So real world is messy. The data can be delayed from a number of reasons. And our pipeline, they need some rule to how to handle the late data. So um, actually, the talk, this talk is mostly based on this book, Streaming Systems. So it's an overview of data processing concepts and it's recommended for streaming data processing. Yeah, thank you.